have you had a chance to confer with the state on this case? Judge, we've, uh, we were looking at it yesterday. There's an unindicted case a on the robbery charge, Judge. Yes. There's no uh, reports on it as of yesterday and this morning. There's only video. So uh, Jason knows about it and we're trying to see what's going to happen with that unindicted case, Judge. All right. So, um, State, when do you expect to have information? Well, Judge, it, it happened on July 6th. Yeah, it's a fairly new case, Judge. Okay. So, I, I mean, I know today's August 1st, so I usually always said back then 30 days minimum. 30 days, okay. But, yeah. So. Uh, September 11th? That should be sufficient. That's more than 30 days from today. Okay. All right, we will see you then. But before you go, the court is in receipt of a violation report. Have you had a chance to review that? Yes, Judge. All right, so with regards to the violation report, when was the robbery alleged to have been committed? Seven, uh, July 6th, Your Honor. Uh, well, that's I mean, before. Yeah, the robbery wasn't alleged on the violation. I've done. I've received two violation reports, but they're not alleged. It's not alleged. Okay. All right. So I've received a violation report, and this is his fourth violation report. Honestly, I don't think he should be on bond because this is the fourth violation report, and he was given. Uh, not by me, but he was given a PR bond for unlawfully carrying a weapon with a felony conviction and a PR bond for rating arrest, detention, second or more. And then now we have these violations. And since the state is telling me that the robbery case was before these, I'm not even considering that because that happened before. I know sometimes judges will look at the fact that somebody had a prior offense, but since there's another judge who gave him a PR bond and not me, I'm only looking at the fact that this is your fourth violation. And now we have. Um, and, you know, just to give you a little timeline, uh, July 6th was the uh, alleged date of the robbery. And then a warrant was issued on July 23rd. And then he was arrested on. July 29th, uh, and also the failure to appear at the same time. The legends. All right. So if you want, I'm going to um, okay. issue a judge's warrant. And if you want to have a hearing, uh, I will reset it within 14 days for you to have a hearing, or either you can just come in and get a setting from the coordinator whenever you want a hearing for a bond setting. Uh, Mr. Romero, do you understand why I'm issuing a judge's warrant? Um, yes. Okay. If you have any questions about anything that I'm doing, feel free to ask because I want you to know that I'm treating you fairly. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, so I'm going to issue a judge's warrant and remand you without bond, but your attorney can come in at any time and we can have a hearing where a bond can be set for you. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you have any questions about anything? Defense, anything? Okay. All right. So we'll see you back on September 11th. But again, your attorney can come back at any time on the bond issue. All right. Thank you. And are you Antonio Rios the third? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and state's motion. Sorry, states motion to supplement pending motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision 
Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Antonio Rios III, who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022, CR 6495, for the offense of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, four grams, 200 grams, on September 20th, 2022, for a term of six years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right, state. Violated condition number four in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Antonio Rios III, then and there failed to report to the supervision officer as directed for the month of December 2022 in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, state waives all the violations. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number four, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, Sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number four? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number four true. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, it's sat and followed by after. Is that the agreement? It is, Your Honor. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, the death, and the truth? So help you, God. All right, right, if you can lower your hand, make sure you speak up. Uh, State your name for the record. Antonio Rios III. All right. So why do you feel you need to go to SATA? Well, um, um, I really had a pretty hard time, you know, trying to make it out of here uh, in the free world and um, lost my home and job was going pretty slow and um, just didn't really, didn't have a car or, you know, anything to work with. So uh, I couldn't really uh, put myself out there. Uh, SADF is not for people who've lost their homes. So we're back to, why do you feel that you need SADF? Oh, um, uh, I guess. Uh, to, uh, to no, not with, I guess. Uh, uh, for me to, to help me with the problem that I've had for a while. And what is that? Uh, having drug problem. And what drug is that? Uh, that was methamphetamine. All right. And I see your tattoos. Is any of that gang related? Oh, no, man. There's, there's just regular tattoos. Probation. Has there been a gang evaluation done on him? Here's the thing. Some, well, many times I'm asking about tattoos because I'm curious, but there are also some tattoos that are gang related. If you're not honest with me about your gang affiliation, you know what's going to end up happening? You're going to be sitting at the jail if I follow this agreement, waiting to go to SADF, and then SADF is going to discover that you're a gang member and you're not going to be eligible for SADF, and then it's going to come right back here. So, any gang affiliation? Uh, no, 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 that's more so. Okay. You know, if I may, yes. I had, to, had that conversation with my client. I let him know in advance, of course, position in these matters. I want to know any symbols related to MS 13, Mexican Mafia, any gang staff, or any said no. We just tattoos he had acquired. Okay. All right. Probation, is this your recommendation? Yes. All right. What have you done on probation other than not appear? Uh, what I, I have uh, done the Zoom class, uh, participated on Zoom uh, with the, my uh, probation officer. Or... So you're saying you did orientation where you checked in? Yes. And the three, Sean, you're saying no? Three months. So that's all you've done. So basically you have done nothing. Right. So why should I continue you? Oh, um, so I'll be out there in the streets and doing the same thing again. I don't know, but everybody over in the box and everybody who goes to prison would love to say, give me a chance so that I won't be out there doing the same thing. Right. That's not a good reason. It doesn't appear that you've done well on probation. I, I haven't done that, that's true, but... Um... Yeah, the fact that, that I had no no place to go, you know, it didn't give me the chance to get myself out there. And... Well, I mean, at the end of the day, though, why is the court, because this is a criminal court, why is the court responsible for you having a place to go? Well, uh, it'll help me uh, find myself, I guess. Well, I'm trying to, trying to do better for my life and uh, with a program like this. It was, How old are you? 48. All right, I can say this because I've had family members who were your age and actually older who are saying they're trying to find themselves. You should have already found yourself. Right. You know, that gap year, although I wasn't allowed a gap year, 
But that gap year is from the time you leave high school before you go to college. So you can supposedly find yourself. You know, in my household, it's you can find yourself in a room, you can find yourself at a job, but nobody's going to be sitting around this house finding themselves without working or going to school. Do you have children? Uh, yes, I do. They're growing up. And what are their ages? Uh, 28 and 29. And did you participate in their upbringing? Yes, I walked along at their upbringing. When did you start using drugs? Uh, after, I was like maybe 28. Okay. Well, let me just tell you, Deputy Laura always says that probation in this court is very hard. And it's hard because one, I'm trying to give you the tools you need to rehabilitate yourself. But sometimes it's too hard for people and they come right back. Well, so, I have been uh, clean for the last past six months. Eight months. So I'm going to give you a choice. Some people I cannot give choices. I already know what choice Deputy Laura would choose because she's already told me sometimes which choice she would choose. So here's your choice for today. Okay. One, I think ISF cognitive and substantive would be better for you than Sabbath. So I could send you there or either I will revoke you and give you three years in the prison. You will do your time. You will Maybe you'll get paroled early, maybe not, but at most you'll do three years. Then when you get out, if you still want to find yourself, you can find yourself hopefully without picking up new cases. There are plenty of free rehab places you can go to. Uh, my understanding, San Antonio has some great shelters because there's the Salvation Army, there's Haven for Hope, there's all of that here in San Antonio that is for free. So, which you would prefer? I uh, would like to uh, participate in the program. Okay. All right. I'm going to deny the motion. I'll change the main conditions to include ISF cognitive and substantive. There should be the UA hotline upon release. And that's until further notice. And I've previously ordered employment for you. So proof of employment within 45 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And probation will continue with the previously ordered field visits. And that's uh, one time per month. Thank you, George. Probation, is there anything else you need? Is there anything else you need from the court no, to be no. successful? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, we can go off the record from here on out in your life. You, Everything that you do, there are two questions you should ask yourself. You know what those two questions are? First question is, what is what I'm doing? Could it potentially result in me going to prison for 20 years? If the answer is yes, don't do it. If the answer is maybe, don't do it. You understand? Yes, and this court, communication is key. You have not been communicating with anyone. So if there's an issue, you need to let probation know. If you feel as though probation is not addressing that issue, then come to the court. We're always here. Do you understand? So. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. you Thank you, Your Honor. So I'll have my excuse. Yes, have a good thank night. you. Tell your wife I said hi. Mom and I say hi. And just one moment. All right, before we go on the record, uh, this is a pet possession less than a gram case. Were you pregnant during this time? No, ma'am. All right. I'm not inclined to do a no application on her. Obviously, she has a drug problem and she's pregnant. She is pregnant, Your Honor. Um, she uh, is telling me that she has been clean since this arrest in December of uh -huh. 2022. Um, and then she came um, uh, pregnant uh, and she's been, she's born now. She's three and a half months along. Um, so she's telling me she has been clean. All right. Do you live in Bear County? Yes, ma'am. 
I'm not going to do no application on her. If you all want to apply for probation, I'll give her probation, but I'm not doing no application. Okay, Judge. Someone did great work on your tattoos, at least the forearm tattoos. Oh, Is that supposed to be Deadpool behind the uh, clown or no? It. Hmm? It, yeah, no, I know that's the clown, but what's behind the clown? Oh, his, ball his balloon. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. I see it now with the sailboat in yeah. it. All right. Sure. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh, Council, you need to have that motion filed today. Okay. Thank you. Court is calling 2023 CR 1351 State of Texas versus Ashley Caballero and probation. This is an application. Yes, Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Angela Defense. Blake. Angela Blake. And are you Miss Caballero? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, sir. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Caballero, I'm showing you what's entitled Application for Deferred Adjudication or Community Supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, everyone, just give me two minutes. Just remain right here. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. You're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, less than one gram. That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days uh, up to two years at the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, sir. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your agreement. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain solid? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Okay, I'm going to need you to speak yes, up. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea. All right. Uh, counsels, could you all approach for a moment? According to the plea, the state is recommending deferred adjudication in a $500 fine. Of course, uh, the court will hear argument on the fine, but usually the court probates the fine. Uh, did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waive of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with yes, your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Until I finish. No. <laughs> and did you uh, sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, are there any such motions? Yes, ma'am. Outside the agreement. The state is recommending that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. There'll be a TAP evaluation and 100 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State, any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. I submit state's exhibit one in the attachments. No, Judge, Your Honor. All right. And state, you may be excused to continue to confer. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Caballero, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same.
All right. After reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? We just request the court um, waive the or probate the entire fine. All right. The court will probate the fine. Ms. Caballero, how many children do you have? I have seven. Seven. Everyone, please whisper. And what are their ages? I have 18, 17, 16, 11, 10, 9, and a 7. Wait, 11, 10, 9, nine. 7. All right, and now you have a baby on the way? Yes, ma'am. All right, you're 18, 17, 16, 11, 10, 9, and 7. Where are they? Um, three. My three oldest are with their dad. Um, my 10-year-old and my 9-year-old are adopted by my cousin. My 11-year-old and my um, 7-year-old are adopted by my brother. So because you're saying adopted, I'm assuming there was a CPS case. And what happened with the CPS case? Um, I voluntarily signed over my rights. All right. What were they asking you to do that you did not do? Um, I didn't comply with my house service. I needed one room to be completed and it wasn't completed on time. So Child Protective Services does not have you signing away your rights because of place. I passed. I was doing everything I was supposed to. It's just it wasn't at my house wasn't completed to get my kids back on time so it was either the state took them or they volunteered to send no. for my rights child protective services that's not the way it works the way child protective services works and i will tell you i think your attorney may have handled child protectors you have not, not all right i've handled plenty of child protective services cases and what you're telling me that's not the way it works you know how it works they give you a year to get your life together, to try to get your children back. And what ends up happening is you have a babysitter for free for a year. And what they want you to do is not use drugs. They want you sober. They want you to have a place for your children. They want you to be able to financially support your children. Now, if your housing is not ready, because they help you get housing. Yes, it was just the, that's what it was, the the placement my housing it was just they said that one of the rooms wasn't completely finished because i had a, a i had to rebuild my rooms no let me just tell you what you're telling me now is not true and let me tell you why i say it's not true now that may be a part of it but that's not the whole reason because i just told you child protective services if you need housing for your children guess what they will help you get housing for your children if there's a problem with the house where you're staying at mm-hmm. where maybe it's not up the code guess what child protective services will help you get your house up to code they do all of that but if your house is not up to code if you're moving a man in that you're not supposed to be moving in and if you're still doing drugs no child protective services is not giving your child back and they will give you a year to get your act together and if you have your act together within that year but you still need a little thing like for example you're telling me you need your housing they will extend it So the fact that all these children you have, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you don't have any of them in your custody and all of them were adopted out, that tells me not only did you not do anything within a year and the fact that they didn't extend you because it doesn't sound like they extended you, that means that you were not doing anything. And now you're about to have another child. Are you employed? No. When's the last time you had employment? Five years ago. I'm sorry? Five years ago. Five years ago. And is the father of this child the same father of your other children? No, ma'am. Who's the father of the 18-year-old? Um, his dad, Christopher. Christopher? So, he's- so Christopher is the father of 18, 17, and 16-year-old? Yes. Who's the father of the 11-year-old? Um, Daniel Deliveries. Who's the father of the 10 and 9-year-old? The same. And the seven year old Same. and this child. No, not this one. So how often are you using meth? Well, I was using it often when they took away my kids, but when I signed them over. See, now this is where you the dishonesty come in. I asked you, why were your rights taken away from you? And what did you tell me? Housing. And I even told you I've done CPS cases and they don't just take it away for housing. Now you come back with I was using when they took my children away and I signed after. I start. I got my kids taken from me. No, that's when I started so, using meth. How many times are you were you using meth? 
after they took my kids, I was using it an everyday thing. All right. And how many times were you using it before CPS even got involved in I your life? Using it oh, so why did CPS get involved in your life? Because my daughter had an accident. Which daughter? My youngest, my seven-year-old. What accident did she have? She fell from the second floor balcony to um, down the second floor balcony under the, father's, under the father's watch. Okay. So let me explain something to you. Um, children cannot support themselves. And it appears to the court that you're just having children and allowing somebody else to support them. For example, if I were to have a child, I can't say, oh, cute baby, and then put them at Travis Park and say good luck to you. And that's what you've been doing with all of your children. You haven't raised a single one of them and you haven't been working. So let me just tell you, I'm going to help you with that. And I don't know why you're getting attitude with me. You haven't raised any of your children. None of your children are with you. You have an 18 year old, 17. Here's the thing you have an 18 year old, 17 year old, 16 year old, 11 year old, 10 year old, 9 year old, 7 year old, and none of them are with you. You're not raising them. You haven't been working. You just told me in five years, you haven't been financially supporting any of them. Now you have a baby on the way. But I'm going to help you with that. So I'm going to sentence her to four years deferred adjudication. There's going to be a TAP evaluation in custody. And she's to follow all recommendations of TAP. Other than this felony case, does she have any other felonies? Uh, not on her, well, pending, Your Honor, or in her record? On her record. I believe she has one other felony. On For what? I'm not. Unauthorized use of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know, there's, I know it's a state jail felony, Your Honor. She says unauthorized use. All right. She's going to do a TAP evaluation in custody. All the recommendations will be followed. If TAP says that she's not to do inpatient treatment before she's released, we're going to come back to court and find out what treatment program she needs to be in with whatever treatment court that's available. You're going to get employment. Proof of it. And I understand if it's a, if it ends up being a difficult pregnancy, which I hope it will not be, it is. then we will do something about the employment. I know my mom worked until nine months. I know she's explained to me her she's already a high risk. All right. There's going to be proof of employment within 45 days of release. And if she can't work, then she'll need to find a doctor's. She need to have a doctor's excuse. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Once she's released, I'm going to want random field visits one time per month until further notice. We're going to do the UA hotline until further notice. 200 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to order parenting classes. Make sure that's intensive parenting classes. And once she completes that, the community service hours will be waived. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. She is not allowed to reside in any home with minors. There's a $500 fine that will be probated. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. How far did you go in school? I went up to the 10th grade. Why didn't you graduate? Because I was going down the route path. Okay. And uh, do a gang evaluation on her, please. Probation, is there anything else she needs? Anything else you need from the court? No, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? All right. And did you review the trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal with your attorney? And did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. I know you probably say Stephanie Boyd is being hard on me, but somebody needs to be hard on you because you just can't go through this world having children and wanting somebody else to support them. And that's what's been happening. You can't go through this world and not have employment. The only people who are allowed to not really have employment are eccentric, wealthy people.
because they already have the money, but you're going to have to get a job. You can't be finding yourself now. You know the reason why you don't have time to find yourself because you have all these children and you continue to have more children. So it's going to have to stop. You understand? Yeah. All right. Good luck to you. Thanks, Judge. Thank you.